walking away from France. Five and a half hours in at Road Atlanta, same portion. Out This is the car, this is the track, and this is a Screaming Eagles Army sticker that Sean has put on. Shout out to Sean uh, from Twitch. He redeemed his channel points into the first race, and we are starting in P6 with a 21.3, just one tenth behind Joey, who's right there ahead of us in the Misano pole racing livery. Starting with lap number one, where the race starts, flag goes green. We are off to the races. However, we are going to lose a position immediately to the VRS car. Started in P7 and uh, is going to demote us into P7 as he goes alongside Joey. Joey has the inside for the first corner. He's going to be able to hold it, get the power down real nicely, and he will take that one. So I'm assuming, yep, there he goes. VRS will settle behind him, and uh, we will come through the S's for the first time this race uh, in a single file line, which is amazing. I love when there's not like multiple people going too wide through the S's, it's just not how you want to start. I, I mean, well, it's not actually a bad way to start the race, but it's a very dangerous way. And um, yeah, it, it's easy to die there. So I'm happy that that didn't happen. Towards the end of the first lap, a few cars behind us. These guys are gonna go side by side. Car number 16, looking to make an overtake into the chicane at the end of the very long straight on road Atlanta. And uh, he's going to claim the inside. They go too wide through the second bit. Their lines just don't quite match up. And as they run into each other behind them, this guy makes an epic dive, completely goes deep into the corner. This guy cuts back directly into the back of him. The guy who spun earlier is across the track. They make contact. And uh, quite a few people are going to get set back from that, lose some positions. And a couple of them having to pull into the pits as well. The guy who got spun originally being one of them. And he has a an epic pit entry, driving into the wall, carrying a bit too much speed there and slowing himself down perfectly uh, just in time for that. So great job by him. Lap number two, we are still in P7, following behind the VRS car who is uh, following Joey and then so on and so forth, all the way up to P1. So we have dropped off a little bit of the VRS car, but as we come through here, he's gonna have a bit of a moment over the final curb, slide off to the right, and then I have a bit of a moment immediately after jumping this curb into the wall, able to keep the car pointed the right direction. We definitely take a little bit of damage from that. Nothing dramatic, but we do lose two positions as well. So gained one from the VRS car going down, and then uh, lost two from these guys passing up as I had that terrible, terrible run out of the S's. And this video, I really wanna highlight uh, some of my worst races. I, the race doesn't seem too bad right now, but just, uh, just wanna show the importance of not making little errors and how little errors can build up and lead to bigger errors. As we are currently under threat from Matthew Hunter behind us, 0.1 seconds. And fortunately, as we head towards the chicane, uh, he's actually gonna back off. He pulls to the inside and then actually backs off a bit. So completely giving us a ton of space there to uh, skip, settle back into our rhythm. So we ride towards the line in P8 after two laps of Road Atlanta, and we're gonna stay there for quite a few more laps. This is lap number six. There are 19 laps in total. So we are about, uh, I guess we're about a little, a third of the way through around there. Car ahead getting a horrible run through the first corner, and that will put us right on his tail coming into the S's. We have dropped off of the top five at the moment. You can see uh, Joey, I mean, you'll see it, see it right here, just how far up the road they are. Joey is in P5 at the moment, and he is five seconds ahead of us. So we have a lot of room to make up. Get a really good exit out of the S's, and we're gonna be right on this guy's tail. We have the slipstream. You don't really wanna make a move here unless you know you're much faster than the person ahead as they will, will probably just make a move back uh, as you get around to that very long straight if they are behind you and we are going to try and do that this time so getting onto the straight trying to stay as close as we can we are one tenth away from them they are about a second away from the car ahead of them so we should definitely have more slipstream than them and uh, gonna try and use that to our advantage moving to the inside by the end of the straight towards the chicane break as late as we can and that will just barely put us ahead and he's gonna back out of that one allow us through so we move up into p7 still a lot of race left and uh, p6 is currently a second ahead of us he will stay there for quite a while this is lap number 12 so skipping ahead six more laps and uh, not much has really changed still about four seconds off of Joey we are much closer to p6 however and we're gonna try and perhaps get a run going onto the straight here opening up just a little bit more than him try and carry more speed through here he gets a bit of a slide there and I want to use this as much to my advantage as possible so what I am thinking I'm gonna do I know I have a better run I want to hold him tight to the inside it's a left hand for the chicane so I want to hold him to the inside dart out at the last second but as I try and hold him tight I think he just 
He thinks that I move all the way over, which people always assume this. I think you should probably always check to see if somebody is holding you tight before you try and turn over. He's able to skate away, and yeah, we have crit pretty critical damage, so that will be the end of our race. Bam, and pretty pretty tough one there losing both i rating and safety rating finishing in p18 he did send us an apology message though which made me feel better but honestly i mean i shouldn't have put myself in that situation earlier by running into the wall joey finished in p5 so that is a dub for the entire world into the next race and i am starting p3 joey right behind me in p4 uh less than a tenth behind me so our lap times are looking very similar or at least our qualifying times getting right underway uh the leader moves to the left side the alpine car behind following him through I'm kind of holding the inside just in case something happens. Joey is under pressure from two guys, and he's going to hold them both back, kind of pit them against each other slightly here, and car number nine decides to back out and let car number two run through there. So into single file line. Behind both of those guys is a Red Bull livery, which if you don't know, it's kind of a meme in iRacing that uh, Red Bull liveries will just kind of fuck you right off the track, uh, just do Verstappen type things, thinking that they are Verstappen. Um, maybe some foreshadowing there, maybe not, we'll see. We managed to keep P3 through the S's on lap number one, following behind Tice Hodge and Bailey Ford at the very front, who's an extremely fast driver. Tice in the Alpine livery, which there's kind of a similar, I mean, really just F1 liveries in general have like a kind of meme attached to them in sim racing. Now, obviously there's not always truth to that, but uh, especially in like lower rated lobbies, I would say that that is a lot more prevalent. Trying to follow behind him and hold the slipstream down. Joey is right behind us as well, soaking up slipstream. So uh, it looks like it's going to be a pretty close battle at this point through the chicane for the first time and not really any action happening here. We're all taking our lines, just settling into the race. Skipping ahead to lap number two as we come around to get onto the straight for the second time. And you literally can't even see the guy in P1 because the guy in P2 is just that much on his ass. And if you look at the relative, I mean, he's closing onto him rapidly. I think the guy in P1 didn't have the best run there either. So he's definitely soaking up slipstream. They're doing a little bit of dipping to the left and the right. P1's going to try and hold the inside. It looks like Tice is going around the outside. Extremely good run. He is pretty far ahead of them as they enter into the braking zone and there's not much that uh, Bailey can do there so he's going to settle into P2. Uh, we remain in P3 and that's about all of the action that happened on that lap and for actually quite a while we're going to skip ahead to lap number five going on to the straight and I'm going to have a bit of a moment here. It's It seems very small uh, but just like in the last race you know a little bit of a slide there at the beginning of the straight can absolutely kill your run and Joey was already hot on my tail. He is going to have a significantly better run than me now so up slipstream for the first i don't know 400 meters of the straight and look at how far ahead of me he's going to get as i am full throttle still and he is like over a full car length ahead of me like two car lengths ahead of me so we're going to fall back there's some fighting going on for the lead but it looks like tice is going to be able to defend it around the outside turns into the inside for the second part of that chicane and uh, we are now down into P4 with Francisco right behind us, who is that uh, that Red Bull driver that we were mentioning as I drive into the dirt. Going to slow me down a little bit more. And um, just from those two little mistakes, I mean, driving into the dirt didn't really help. It didn't hurt all that much. It was mainly that slide at the beginning of the straight that has put me in a position where I am now under pressure from Francisco. And I am continuing to fall back as I break a little bit too early, entering into the top of that hill, which is like really the start of the S's, losing quite a few tenths actually to Joey ahead of me. And Francisco is now two tenths behind me, looking for a good run, going to get the opposite of it, oversteering, going into the sand and the dirt. He has moved to the outside as we head onto the corner that leads onto the corner that leads onto the straight. I'm actually going to try and maintain the inside here, slow him down a little bit, if nothing else, than to give Joey a bit of more room to breathe, sliding ahead ahead of him, barely maintaining that position up the inside, and uh, this guy is going to have a significantly better run than both of us now. Uh, however, Francisco has the slipstream, this guy has the slipstream of Francisco, and he's going to bump him past me, so that position is over and done for me. I am now into P5, and I'm going to try and hold that sliding in between Francisco and car number two behind, making it, uh, or at least trying to conserve one position, and uh, it looks like we will get that one done. Dropping off a bit to Francisco as that defense in front of car number two and my narrow line in just didn't yield me the best run. 22.5 was that lap time uh, for lap number six, which is terrible. You really want to be running high 20s, low 21s uh, at full pace and uh, not doing that right now. So dropping off and dropping back 
the trend is continuing. We have uh, two tenths behind us to P6 at the moment, who is a very fast driver. I have seen him win a couple of races this week, hoping to be able to keep him behind. And already you can kind of see there hasn't really been any major mistakes on this this uh this race it's just kind of been these little tiny things that put you in these hard situations where you really have to sacrifice time and uh, sometimes a position by the time lap number 11 comes around we are pretty far off of the guys at the front joey riding p3 alpine in p2 and uh, francisco right behind joey so he's going to be following him through as they kind of turn into a group of four for the lead however i'm really not that far behind so if i can just I mean, what I really need is them to make a mistake, potentially somebody at the front of that group and slow everyone down. However, it's not gonna be at the front where it happens. It's going to be at the back as he runs into the wall, Francisco, that is, bounces right back onto track. And uh, we're gonna go around the outside of him there, picking up that position. So back into P4, but it doesn't really look like Francisco has any damage. And uh, it looks like he may be able to maintain his pace onto the straight. He's going to have an ever so slight of a moment, which will let me pull away just enough to uh, keep me safe on this straight. Joey watching the back battle for P1 up ahead of him, Rage on, and it's looking like everything is going to be normal here, taking the line through, nobody really attacking each other, but uh, car or P2, I'm not sure, red lines, super hard there, and Joey was not prepared for that, he slows down a ton, ends up slowing down Joey as well, and they actually make contact there, loses a ton of speed, and that will put me up into P3 on lap number 12, so we have seven laps left, following behind P2 now, Tice, who I believe, uh, I mean, what I'm guessing there is that his, uh, his wheel didn't shift for him, it got stuck, and it, like, missed a shift, and that, um, that probably made him redline and lose all that speed. So really unfortunate for him, but I mean, honestly, really unfortunate for Joey, who had to take a contact there and lose a ton of time. So he lost about a second and a half to the leader, even more than that. He lost about two seconds to the leader. By the time lap number 15 comes around, Joey is heavily under pressure from Francisco, car number six in the Red Bull livery. And going through turn one, Francisco is just going to basically drive him wide. I think Francisco underbroke a bit from that. He definitely had the opportunity to turn in, slow his car down a little bit more. It looked like his car was heading for a line using just about all of that track while Joey was on the outside of him. So putting both of them off of the track, losing a position for both of them, really unfortunate. Joey is now finding himself just kind of against his will being put back into uh, the midst of the middle of the pack. I have a major moment on lap number 16. End up completely cutting this as I figured it may be faster. However, the slowdown really hits hard. So um, this guy was, I think he was about two and a half to three seconds behind me when I cut that corner and he is now directly on my tail and I'm still serving the slowdown. So uh, it's going to be pretty rough for me to maintain this. Still in P3, but yeah, the situation is not looking too hot. He has a ton of slipstream, a better run, and Francisco is catching behind him. I see that in my mirrors. I know that Francisco is extremely fast, so I'm hoping that we could have as little fighting as possible to uh, try and run away from Francisco is really what I was worried about. I'm gonna end up settling behind him. However, I probably could have been even more conservative, kind of like fall behind him a bit earlier to really focus on a better run out because my run through the chicane is absolutely god awful. So I drop about half of a second to uh, P3 now as I am in P4 and P5, who is Francisco, is right on my tail now as lap number 17 comes around. So only this lap and then two more left. We are running down to the wire. Gonna try my best to get away from this guy. I know he's fast. I've seen him win a couple of races as well. So I'm in between two people who are very capable drivers drivers and quick drivers and uh, I have been making quite a few errors this race so I just need to clean it up and I should be okay to at least finish in P4 uh, is my goal at the moment. I have the slipstream of Surin ahead. I'm really hoping that Surin can kind of pull even further ahead so that I can just ride his slipstream all the way down to the end of the straight and um, I don't have to make a move because at this point, I realize that if I look to make a move around this guy, I am opening myself up to losing a position to Francisco if Surin is able to defend it successfully. And uh, if I don't go for a move, but I still have a good run, I'm going to have to slow down, which is going to allow Francisco an opportunity to make a move on me. And then I could potentially lose a position that way and potentially drop off of Surin if I'm busy defending Francisco. So <sighs> stupid, stupid of me here to go for this move. I was thinking it all the way through that I could lose a position here, but I thought, you know, maybe it would work for me. It ends up being the total wrong decision, a bit of a slide on exit. Now it looks like we're gonna lose a position to Francisco as well. It's too wide through the final corner, but it's not, 
oh, it's not going to work out for us. And it looks terrible from that angle. I mean, honestly, it looks terrible from every angle. Joey almost fucking dying there as well. Um, I don't know. This one's a tough one to call. It's definitely fault of me for running into him, but... I mean, I've gone through this corner too wide multiple times this week, never had this happen. I feel like there was a lot more space on the inside and we were both, I think, kind of trying to fight to uh, get as close to the racing line as we could. I think he could have taken a tighter line and slowed down a bit more. Look at this. This is Joey almost dying to Francesco, uh, but definitely on fault for me as well. So uh, really rough for both of us. There we are. Uh, he, he did apologize. I don't know. I mean... I think it was both of us, so, I mean, I accept that apology, but also I am sorry to Francisco as well. P4 for Joey. Congratulations to Joey gaining those two positions right there. And here are the results from that one. It is worse than the last one. So losing a shit ton of I rating and safety rating. And I just want to sink into everybody's head how important it is to uh, realize that when something shitty happens, a lot of times you can look back at your own race and be like, oh, you know, maybe if I hadn't cut this corner, if I hadn't slid here, I would have never been in the situation that eventually got me killed. So uh, there's always something that you can do and learn from. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out my channel, some of my other videos, and I'm sure you will enjoy those as well.